Can you tell us your name, age, and what you do for a living? Yes. Uh, my name is Abigail George. I am oh, 44, just turned 44, and I work in child protection. Okay. And your current relationship status? Uh, single. And do you have children? I do. I do. I have two, um, an 11-year-old daughter and a nine-year-old son. Do you want children in the future? I love children, so I will always have children around, um, but not my own, not my biological children. No. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Just thought I would ask. Yes. Why did your last relationship end? Um. Well, I separated from my husband about nine years ago, divorced about seven years ago, so I didn't really start talking to anybody until the divorce was final, which was kind of my thing. I was still married until I was divorced. Um. I was talking to someone for a few years, but it was long distance. I don't know if it was officially a relationship, but in the end, neither of us could move, um, which was a shame. But he is the one, and people like yourself, who really got me thinking about remarrying because prior to that, I was like, I'm just going to focus on the kids. I felt a bit spiritually suffocated in my marriage, so I just threw myself into all these other things I wanted to do. And so until I started talking to him, I was kind of like, I don't think I'm going to do the marriage thing again. But it was good having that three years talking to him. He taught me a lot and made me realize, well, I think I am ready to get married again. Mm. Awesome. What's a deal breaker for you? A deal breaker. I have a few deal breakers. Um, biggest one will probably be trust. Okay. Dishonesty. If there's any dishonesty, I, I that would be a deal breaker. Um, another thing will probably be like, if it's not reciprocated, the values and the things that I, I feel like I would bring, mm -hmm. um, I would also expect. So the honesty, the respect, the, you know, consideration, all that stuff. I think if that wasn't reciprocated, that would probably be a deal breaker. How do you handle difficult situations? I'm a talker. I'm a talker. So I like to talk through things. I've learned, I've learned over time that not everybody resolves things the same way. So I may be with somebody who needs a bit of time before we go back and revisit it. I'm all ready to talk. Like if something happens, let's talk about it. But I respect that not everybody is the same. And so, it, you know, it may be different, but yes, I'm a big talker. I believe in talking it out. And why do you want to be married? Um, it's a good question. I didn't actually want to be married initially before I got married the first time. And then after I got divorced, but I've come to realize that, uh, I'm a helpmate. I really do. I like to help. And so I feel like God's design for family was around marriage mm -hmm. and I would love the opportunity for, you know, to have a marriage that's God centered and to be able to be a helpmate. And also for my children to be a part of a unit where, you know, God is the center of a husband and wife and they can see that role model um, in our family. So I want to be on board with somebody who has a vision and I can help them with that and we can work together and do more than we could do on our own. Mm -hmm. Love it. All right, Abigail, I have three more questions I want to ask. And okay. we're going to go a little deeper. Oh, okay. All right, you ready? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay. When you were scared, sad, angry, or overwhelmed, who, if anyone, did you go to for comfort as a child? Oh, my mom. My mom was the person. She. I have three brothers. My mom was my best friend. So she was the person that I went to for everything. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Are you a spender or a saver? Oh, I used to be a big saver. So my rule when I was younger was like I would buy a car. I wouldn't travel or do anything until I had no debt. Um, got married. My husband was a spender. So being submitted, I tried to balance it as best I could. Um, now I'm a single mom. And so I try and save, but my kids also need things. So I have to try and, cons you know, constantly look at what we need, what we can save, how it works, look long-term, that kind of thing. But ideally, I I'm also a generous person. So, um, ideally I think it's good to save and spend. <laughs> Understood. 
Understood. What did you learn about relationships from watching your caregivers? Oh, my parents. Um, God has to be the center of it. I um, watch them go through difficult times and just really cling to God and each other and pray through it. Um, they did argue, but it was always um, not very often in front of us, but when it was, it was very respectful. Um, so I learned it's not how you love, it's how you fight that will determine if you stay together or not. And so they fought well um, and they leaned on God and they leaned on on the church and the word. And so I think that's the biggest thing that I learned. Mm-hmm. I love it. That's beautiful. Well, Abigail, thank you so much for your time all the way from Sydney, Australia. Sydney, Australia. <laughs> yes. So you can find love anywhere. You just never know. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Right. You, you never, never know. know. That's right. You just going to try, right? <laughs> that's right. And this is why I'm doing this series to connect like-minded people. And even if you don't find that somebody right now, it could just be a great friend. You never know. That's so. exactly right. I think it's about expanding your network and just connecting. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time, Abigail. Mm-hmm. Everyone that's watching and listening, connect with Abigail. The DM <laughs> is open. So should you talk to Abigail? (laughs) Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.